Good evening. Uh, my name is Gary Mason. My topic this evening is the political landscape, and it's a subject I'm happy to report is superbly timed, given that the politi political topography in B.C. and Alberta, as it pertains to energy and pipelines in particular, is changing at warp speed. It's changing so fast, in fact, that it, it has created a new level of instability in energy matters in Canada. Recent events have left both opponents and proponents of pipelines wondering what it all means. Just consider what's happened in the last couple of weeks. The Premier of Alberta, Alison Redford, was forced out of office by a coup. Just before that, her Associate Minister of Education and one of the brightest stars in the Alberta government, Donna Kennedy Glanz, quit to sit as an independent. With Ms. Redford's downfall, Jim Prentice's name has suddenly been thrust into the spotlight. Mr. Prentice, of course, is the former federal cabinet minister who has taken on a critical role for Enbridge in building relations with First Nation communities along the path of the proposed Northern Gateway Pipeline. He is now under enormous pressure to run for Ms. Redford's job. If he takes up the challenge, as many expect he will, then Enbridge will have lost the one person many believe gave the company at least a semblance of hope in its bid to win over the hearts and minds of Native leaders opposed to the project. In BC, meantime, John Horgan and Mike Farnworth declared their intention to seek the leadership of the NDP. It's altogether possible that they will be the only two people in the race. Both of their candidacies have profound implication for the energy landscape in the province because their stance around pipelines, most notably, is at, is at odds with the party's current position and at odds with a significant segment of the party's political base as well. More about that in a minute. And then at the municipal level, we saw the mayor of Burnaby, Derek Corrigan, make headlines with his declaration that he'll stand in the path of any bulldozer that tries to carve up land for the proposed Kinder Morgan pipeline expansion. If nothing, it was a grandiose reminder that the fight over pipelines in BC is not simply a federal and provincial issue. While cities like Burnaby and Vancouver do not have any constitutional leverage when it comes to energy policy, mayors like Derek Corrigan and Gregor Robertson do have sway with a broad segment of the electorate in Greater Vancouver. It's an influence that federal and provincial leaders ignore at their peril. Meantime in Ottawa, the man who has been in charge of the critical natural resources ministry, Joe Oliver, was promoted to finance minister, making way for a relative unknown, Greg Rickford, to take over one of the most challenging ministries in Ottawa. And that's all been in the last couple of weeks. Remarkable, really. <laughs> now, obviously, I don't have time to dissect all of these developments, but let me zero in on a couple I believe have the potential to most radically alter the political terrain around energy in the West. The first is the fall of Alison Redford. While there are many happy she's gone, I can tell you the oil industry is not. Ms. Redford was the most activist premier on behalf of the oil and gas sector in Alberta, since the blue-eyed sheik himself, Peter Lougheed. She advocated hard for a national energy strategy. She pushed to revamp the province's oil and gas regulations, changes the industry has been demanding for years. She was a passionate promoter of Keystone. And after some early missteps, she also built a solid working relationship with BC Premier Christy Clark, particularly around energy and pipelines. Now she's gone, and the vacuum her absence has created has been filled with fear and uncertainty. There is nothing the business world abhors more than uncertainty. Oil and gas executives in the province have lost their biggest booster. Say what you will about Alison Redford's failings as a retail politician. She was a bright and articulate voice on behalf of the province's energy sector. Now that sector doesn't know who will replace her, and whether that person will bring the same drive and commitment on their behalf to the job. Energy leaders have no idea whether, in a bid to see the progressive conservatives occupy a larger part of the political center in the province, 
the new leader will become more dove than hawk on energy policy. And that has created nothing short of dread in the oil and gas towers of downtown Calgary. So that's energy destabilizer number one. Energy destabilizer number two is the BC NDP leadership race. There is little question that Adrian Dix's decision to come out against the Kinder Morgan expansion severely damaged his party's chances of winning last spring's election. NDP supporters in small resource-based towns in the interior and the north, particularly unionized workers and their families, deserted the party in favor of the resource-friendlier liberals. Mr. Farnworth and Mr. Horgan both know this and are now making sounds like they plan to address this matter with a policy platform that treads a careful line. They need to keep the environmental wing of the party happy while showing resource towns that were once the backbone of the NDP that they are still on their side. I think both candidates will remain firmly against Northern Gateway. For the NDP, that is a dead issue. Where they will depart significantly from Mr. Dix, and many in the party for that matter, is on Kinder Morgan. Barring some unforeseen cataclysmic event, one of these two men is going to be the next NDP leader in BC. Both want to find a way to support Kinder Morgan without imploding their party. It will be a very, very, very difficult thing to do. Just think about our friend Derek Corrigan that I mentioned earlier. He is an influential New Democrat. He's, he's saying Kinder Morgan over his dead body. So is Gregor Robertson, a former NDP MLA and now leader of Vision Vancouver, a civic party whose supporters, in many instances, are also provincial New Democrats. That gives you some idea of just how hard it's going to be for Mr. Farnworth or Mr. Horgan to broker some kind of deal around Kinder Morgan. Yet that is precisely what one or the other is going to try and do if they win. In the last election, the Liberals successfully framed the New Democrats as the party of no when it came to jobs. Mr. Farnworth and Mr. Horgan believe the NDP needs to be the party of yes if it's ever going to be more than just the official opposition in B.C. In the next year, one of these two men will significantly alter the political environment around energy in B.C. Finally, let me finish with a couple of prognostications. Northern Gateway is dead. It will not happen. A redesigned version of it will, may surface one day down the road, but not likely with Enbridge as the proponent and not without a refinery or crude oil upgrade component as part of the plan. Kinder Morgan will go ahead because the company has avoided many of the mistakes that Enbridge has made. It will go ahead and Derek Corrigan will not lay down in front of a bulldozer in an attempt to stop it. Those are my predictions. Thank you.